So talking about debtors and savers, um, often people are confused that um, when interest rates are rising, it seems like banks make a lot of money. Um, and so why is it that banks need to benefit from rising interest rates at the expense of the ordinary citizen. Can you help to explain that concept of debtors and savers, particularly where banks are concerned? Okay, so maybe maybe two elements. So, so certainly banks will benefit at the onset of an interest rate cycle. Remember when you take your cash and you put it in a bank, you're now a depositor. The bank then has to do something with your money. So part of what they have to do is they would invest in certain instruments to earn interest on your money and a portion of your money is also lent out. Uh, and if you are a saver who looks at the numbers more diligently, you will know that the, the debtors of banks are charged a bit more than what the bank is compensating you for. So at the onset of an interest rate cycle, the banks will get the benefit of what we call the endowment effect. So on the debtor side, they don't yet have bad debt. So they're still collecting a healthy sum and they also are making very healthy earnings from their investment income. But if an interest rate cycle goes on for too long or an economy doesn't grow, at, which is what is happening in South Africa, the economy is not growing, let's assume if interest rates were to stay elevated for too long, this initial windfall that the bank got is going to whittle because then their customers are therefore unable to repay. Uh, and, and so this is what happens. So there is a positive side for banks, which is the sweet spot immediately after interest rates have been raised. But there is a trade-off for them longer term because their customers are also affected by what happens to interest rates. And so if they start to get people no longer repaying as well, uh, the two things cancel each other out. So banks are not always smiling during an interest rate cycle. So if you look at what happened in the United States, you might be familiar with what happened in March. So there was a small bank that had invested a lot in government bonds and they started to get into trouble as interest rates were going up. So what they had paid for the bonds initially and they were hoping to get back is not what they were able to realize in the market. So there was this gap uh, because of the inverse relationship between bond yields and what happens to interest rate. And the investor or the depositors in that bank were very smart people so they could work this out the minute the bank announced that it was going to sell uh, the government bonds that it was holding. And so while the bank was try attempting to do that, its depositors quickly calculated that, oh, this bank is going to be without money. They went, they took all of their money, and overnight that bank was, was in trouble. So there are positives and there are negatives. And this is where I need to put my supervisor's hat and I say, as an MPC member, I see one thing, but as a supervisor of banks, I need to worry about what happens to interest rate risks and how are the banks managing interest rate uh, risks so that you can all sleep at night and your money stays safe.